Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts. Uh, as you might know, I am working on a really fun collage style t-shirt quilts, meaning all the blocks are going to be different sizes. We're really going to feature the shirts for my client in this quilt. And uh, I thought I would start a vlog. Uh, if you've missed video one, I'll put it down in the description box. So this weekend, I had a great opportunity to work a little bit on this quilt. I'm going to show you the progress of the design of this quilt. Now I'm laying it out uh, on the computer using a program called Inkscape. I do have a video that I'll link also in the description box showing how I do this. It's a live video from quite a little ways back, a couple years, I think. Uh, but it might help you if you want to learn how to do that. So these blocks are uh, planned out, already measured, and you'll see I have lots of empty space to do some really fun stuff with her quilt. And she's given me the creative liberties to do all kinds of stuff. So uh, this weekend, I worked a little bit. Uh, the quilt I'm making is for a fellow artist. She is so creative. She does all kinds of genres of art. And one of the things that she loves to do is textured paintings. And she sent me a couple pictures of some of her paintings. I'm going to put those up here on the screen so you can see them. They're so pretty, Everly. And so uh, I did do some sublimation over the last couple of days. These are the photos after I sublimated them. And I have uh, mapped out where they're going to go in her quilt. So let me pull up the progress on the screen of the t-shirts that I've cut because uh, you might have noticed that some of the squares up in the upper left corner are shaded uh, teal colored. I think it's teal. Yes, I shaded them teal. These blocks of shirts have already been cut. They're up on my design wall. And you'll notice, uh, you see the sublimated photo right there, and then there's an empty space right there. Uh, I thought it would also be cool to do some embroidery on her quilt. Uh, we're going to mix up all kinds of techniques in this quilt. And because she's an artist, uh, well, she loves hearts and flowers. So I have some plans to do that later on in the quilt as we start moving in other places. But for this little space, because she's an artist, uh, I went on Etsy. I'm going to show you the embroidery file that I purchased. Isn't that cool? It's a little paint palette. Super cool, right? So I stitched that out this weekend on my embroidery machine. And I just thought I'd walk you through uh, stitching this out on the embroidery machine. I thought it would be fun. But really, the main focus of this video and this whole series really is just to inspire you to get creative uh, with your t-shirt quilts and all kinds of ways to fill in empty spaces or to customize that quilt even more in addition to their shirts. So, uh, yeah, let's move on over to the embroidery machine. We're going to stitch out this uh, paint palette. Just keep in mind, uh, I have a love-hate relationship with my embroidery machine. This is the first time I've used her in about a year and a half. <laughs> but I'll give her props, okay? I have a Bernina B700. I think that's what it is. And uh, she did really well today. So I was very pleased with her performance. And I just thought it would be fun to bring you through the stitch out of this block. With this being a t-shirt quilt, I like to utilize all the empty spaces of the remaining parts of the shirt to fill in spaces uh, throughout the quilt design. So to do that, I just cut off a snippet of one of her white shirts and I'm adding some Pelon P44F to the back side, just like I would any normal uh, block of the t-shirt quilt and then I'm going to hoop this piece with uh, some cutaway stabilizer in the hoop and I'm going to also float a piece of uh, medium weight tear away underneath the hoop as we stitch this out so we can bring this over to the embroidery machine and this is really the funnest part of today's video <laughs> at the embroidery machine. I'm going to speed this up. I think it took about 18, 20 minutes to stitch out this design.
I have a single needle embroider machine. So for each one of the color changes, I have to rethread the machine. And that's usually where this machine for me gives me issues. Um, but she did so good today. I was super proud of her. And because this is such a cool embroidery design, I just thought I'd bring you along and share this with you. Really just hoping to inspire you to get creative with your t-shirt quilts. There's all kinds of things you can do. I'm using mostly Floriani embroidery thread for this design. There was one of the colors, I think that was the red uh, little paint pan. That one was a brother thread, embroidery thread, I think. And then the rest are Floriani, which actually my machine prefers. So one of the things I like to do in my videos is keep it 100% real with everybody and be totally transparent in all of my videos. And right about here, doing this last color change for the eighth paint pan of this design, I realized right about now that I hooped this uh, t-shirt piece sideways and I was going to, in the machine, flip the paint pan design uh, the other way. <laughs> and I forgot to do that. I think I was just so excited to start stitching that I forgot to flip the design in the hoop on the, on the embroidery machine. So now <laughs> I'm contemplating, do I start over or do I modify this block? I kept on stitching it out because it was just going so perfectly, not one single issue during the stitch out. That's a super cute little design, isn't it? I think I wanna make a shirt with this design on it. I think that would be super cool. I will link this design uh, down in the description box if you want to check it out. So once it's stitched out, uh, I'm just going to cut off these jump stitches on the back and remove the tear away stabilizer. And I find it easier to do that part while the piece is still in the hoop. And then I'll unhoop everything and finish cutting the jump stitches on the front of the design. Don't judge my hoop. She's got all kinds of adhesive and strings. <laughs> so I'm just going to remove the little jump stitches from the front. Then we can remove the extra cutaway stabilizer. And I use two stabilizers just to prevent any puckering around the design and it lays super flat. So right about here is where I'm deciding how to modify this design. I think I still want to keep it going uh, horizontally in the block. So I'm gonna trim off some extra and just square it up a little bit. And after doing this, uh, I'm a little bit shy of a seam allowance for this block. So I think I'm going to add a little fabric border all the way around further down the road. So right here, I'm just double checking and I am about a quarter of an inch short for a full size block for that space. So here she is up on the wall 
and I'm going to leave it just like this until I get a little bit further down in the uh, process and then I'll decide on what color to make the fabric border and I'll avoid having to restitch that out and we'll add some fun fabric around that piece so that it's the correct size. So I hope you found this inspiring and fun and I'll see you really soon. Bye everybody.